Are you listening? Damn. Uh. What's good, people? I am your host, Jesse Moeller, a.k.a. J. Moeller 05, and welcome to another episode of the Rancies of Fantasy Football Fanatic. I'm your host, The Fanatic. This week, I wanted to break down specific league types and share the different formats people are playing in, just because there's far more than just your traditional redraft or Dynasty League, we kind of have a good idea on what those are. But I wanted to more break down individual leagues with the rematch, redraft uh, format. One of my favorite is the guillotine. League. And you might be asking yourself, Jesse, what the heck is a guillotine? League? Well, let's pull it up, shall we? We are going to go to the, the famous guillotine league website. It's right here. A guillotine league is 18 teams. And that is for the amount of weeks that we have. You Everybody drafts a team. Um, the structure and formats vary a little bit, but... This is kind of what your traditional league looks like. Now, after your startup draft, you will have every team basically have their roster. They're ready to go. You can make waiver moves. It's not it's not a vampire league or anything like that. So you make waiver moves, additions, stuff like that. Each week, the goal is to not finish last. It's called survive and advance. Um, so as long as you don't finish last, your team survives. Now, what happens to that last place team each week in points scored? They get chopped. They get the guillotine. The axe comes in. Sayonara, sucker. So those players, they go into the free agents and waivers, right? They go to waivers, and you get a bid fat on those players. So you see how this gets rolling and rolling and rolling. Um, so your team starting in week one, if you're if you're surviving in week eight, your team is going to look drastically different. Now, some of the key things with guillotine leagues and why I view those differently for drafts than I do like best ball or your traditional redraft league, right, is – you don't want to get chopped early. So what you don't want is rookies are super like super sketchy um, because you don't know the playing time, right? And they're clogging up a roster spot for you early on. Once they hit, it's a different story. But early on rookies, like someone like Devin A. Chain, Kendra Miller, Jaden Reed, those guys. Now Reed's going a lot later, but they're terrifying. And even Jordan Addison, Quinton Johnston, right? These players that were super high on for come on second half of the year. In the beginning of the year, you cannot trust these guys. Um, Touchdown dependent running backs, Jamal Williams, Nightmare. Um, There are a good, like, there's a good way to draft a team. Um, The guillotine guys have basically gone over that format, but you want high floor players who have that ceiling as well. You don't want guys with a low ceiling because, or a low floor. Like, if you have Kadarius Tony and he puts up a zero, you could go home that week. It's their, the ramifications are massive. Um, it's a really cool format. I very much enjoy this format. So I kind of just wanted to break it down and give you guys an idea. Like, Hey, guess what? It's pretty cool. So let me bust out my league real quick. So I'll show you my, my league I have right now. I'm in a care. I'm in a guillotine league right now and we could do that. So we'll bust out the guillotine. League. As you can see it right here, we're doing the startup draft. Um, there it is. I'll show you a little breakdown. So the roster. How our startup draft is going, we are doing 14 rounds, as you can see right there. It's one QB, tight end, two wide receivers, two running backs, a flex, defense, and then you have like six bench spots, it looks like. So what you're trying to do and how I went into this draft is because it's 18 teams, it's a little bit different. But as you see here, there's all 18 teams. So I will almost never go quarterback tight end my first two rounds. That's just... That's a nightmare scenario. I don't really want to do that. But why I did that with my team is Josh Allen is a cheat code and these scoring settings really boost him. But Josh Allen gives you that high floor because he's a rusher and he's a great passer. And Mark Andrews is a difference maker tight end position. So I'm not too worried about total points. I'm more worried about guys that give you to manage each position. So that's why I went Keenan Allen with a third pick. I could have gone T. Higgins, Aaron Jones, like Amari Cooper, and one of those guys, but Keenan Allen, he's just extremely safe. Like, I'm not I'm not worried about Keenan Allen with Herbert this year at all. He was a beast when he came back. Um, he gives me that, that high floor, which is exactly what I'm looking at. So I have Andrews, Keenan Allen, Josh Allen, right? I have three guys with incredibly high floors. Now, Andrews might seem a little bit dicey, but I happily wanted him because I was torn, and I was actually it was him and St. Brown, but that's why I went with Andrews is because I wanted the difference maker. Because like, realistically, I can get similar production to St. Brown as I can get with Keenan Allen, right? 
What I can't get is similar production to Mark Andrews. So that's why I went tight end in the second round. Now, what I'm trying to avoid as running backs early is because running backs get injured and I'm just going to wait and punt running back. And you could find, especially in PPR leagues, you could find guys. But realistically, I'm just trying to get high floor, high floor, ceiling, high floor, high floor, all those guys on my team. And that's kind of the thought process with it. So it's really cool. We're in the middle of the third round right now. It's it's an untimed draft. It's going to be going a long time. But I just wanted to break that down. Um, it is a more one of the more for, formats. I was in a league last year and I won it. I barely survived a few weeks. I survived one week by less than one point. Um, so the like the winning each week is good because you're beating a team, so you're technically surviving. But it's not important. It's just surviving because um, you can you know put up sixty. 5.4 points and someone puts up 65.2 points doesn't matter you survive in advance so it's pretty interesting league and one of my leagues that i'm doing more of that i thoroughly enjoy you could do dynasty guillotine leagues i don't that's just too complicated for my brain i don't understand it it's there are those out there so if that's for the dynasty heads out there that's what you're looking for feel free but i highly recommend checking out um the key with these also you only have a set amount of fab right so if you spin that fab it's gone. There are different ways to approach it. You can go spend that fab really early. You could hold your fab at the end if your team's strong enough, but you could also get eliminated, right? So you have to find this balance of when to spend it, when not to get it. Um, those early bye weeks are also killer. So check your bye weeks. They are more important in this format than other formats. Um, I have a tab open. <laughs> it's right now is the bye weeks of every team. So in case I'm going to draft someone. So for instance, the first bye weeks are week five. Well, you have I took I did take Keenan Allen. I know he's week five by, but if you stacked like if you had Amari Cooper, you had Keenan Allen, you had Ken Walker, and you also had Geno Smith of all those teams in week five, like you're cooked. So you have to be careful not to overload. Um, that also reminds me, you don't want to stack teams because your team's going to change, right? Like I get it, you can get that elite stack, like you get Burrow and you know Jamar Chase or something of that nature, but you really don't want to stack because if your quarterback sucks, more likely your wide receiver is going to suck or your tight end is going to suck. So it's a double whammy and it's a lot harder to survive when two out of your like seven starting sign up. That's really, that's a hefty percentage is tanking. So it's just, it's good to keep that in mind. Um, ideally, if I was in another league, I would have stacked Andrews and Lamar Jackson, right? But in this format, I spread it out. I didn't want to stack because realistically, I don't know if like if I took Lamar, I don't know if he's going to be my quarterback the entire year. We just don't know how that works. Um, so, yeah, I just was like, you know what? Let's just not stack. I don't want to. Now you can stack if you get significant value. Absolutely go for it. But you shouldn't be. I don't think it should be something you should be st like s focusing on and trying to attain. Where we'll do it in other leagues. We're like, oh, yeah, stack is super important. Not in guillotine league, right? So it kind of shifts your brain how it works. Where it's like you love rookies, not in guillotine, not so much. Um these boom bust players, guillotine, they are much more risky and they can kill you. So I'm not as pro boom bust players like a like a Christian Watson. That dude terrifies me in the guillotine format. I love him in redraft. I love him in dynasty. I think he's like my wide receiver 17 in dynasty. But guillotine for 2023, man, terrifying, right? So you have to you have to determine your strategy going in. And the fun thing about guillotine is it shifts a lot of how I do my drafting and flips it on its head. Because I'll never go quarterback tight end. First two picks, that's just <laughs> this is specifically in redraft. Like, that's not how I want to go about doing that. But I'm more, much more willing to fade running backs in this format and get those high floor wide receivers and just go that route. Um, obviously, I saw some – my brother's actually in this league, and he took Derek Henry and Travis Etienne on the first two picks, and Henry's a beast, right? Um, Etienne's a little bit more risky, but I get it. If you want to play that bully ball, totally understand it, right? So it's just not for everybody. But – this one. So it's just something to think about, right? Where you look at these teams and you're like, oh, somebody's got McCaffrey, Devonta Smith. Somebody's got Barkley and Lamar. Um, we got an Eckler and Ramondre. We have Cup and Pollard. I think the Mahomes team is really interesting because it's Mahomes, Waddle, and Ken Walker. Like that's that's just fun. Um, I wouldn't have taken Walk in there, but I get it. Like he's going to be solid for you. He's not everybody's down on him, but he's he's still good running back. Like I get it. Um the Taylor, Burrow, and Cooper squad is going to be a problem. Like that's as long as you get like solid JT. I also like what DMIC Media did. He went Hurts, Carrot Wilson, and T Higgins out the gate. Um, I almost took T, but 
I'm just I'm a little bit worried about T. And having him as my wide receiver one on this team, like he's got a lower floor than Keenan Allen. So I I just I couldn't do it. Um I'm not as high as T as most people. If if I was higher on T Higgins, I almost didn't. I was debating him, but I was like, you know what? I have more faith in Keenan Allen than I do T Higgins. So that's where I went with. So yeah, there's different formats. Now you could look at the guy next to me who's freaking got Nick Chubb, Josh Jacobs, and Jameer Gibbs. And yeah, like Nick Chubb's the ideal high floor guy. Josh Jacobs, another super high floor guy, right? And then he's got, he's shooting the moon with Jameer Gibbs where let's boom bust. Um, he's just going to flex Gibbs. I think it's very interesting strategy to go three RBs in this format. I would, that's something I would never do. Like there's no shot I'm going that route because I want the difference makers. You could replace that running back production a lot easier than you can quarterback or tight end production, right? So that that person is going to be struggling because it's it's snaking on its way back. So we don't pick for another 40, 50 picks, right? So he he's going to be struggling at tight end and he's going to miss that elite tier QBs. So, I mean, if that's your strategy going in, it's just risky. But it's just a fun format. I highly recommend checking it out. You could do it on Sleeper, which is what we're doing. We're doing a free guillotine league. Um, it takes a little bit more commissioner manager like experience to do it. Like you have to chop the players, you have to be more involved because they don't have a traditional guillotine league set up. You can go to guillotineleagues.com. They're one of the more popular sites. And you could follow that and see what it is. There is the OG of guillotine leagues is Paul Chartrand. Um, you can find him at PAL. P-A-U-L-C-H-A-R-C-H-I-N. He's the guy that's the CEO at guillotineleagues.com. He's been a huge proponent of guillotine leagues. Um, he actually had a – he was on the um, – what is it? Player profile page the, like, the other day where they were talking about guillotine leagues and how fun it is. If you want to see that, I'll link the video in the comments. But, yeah, he's the one I would recommend following. He's been doing it forever. He's a big proponent of them. And, yeah, I, I came over there and I was like, you know what? Guillotine leagues are a blast. So that's my breakdown of guillotine links. Um, if you're going to do a new format this year, I highly, highly recommend it. They're just a lot of fun. Let's be real. Like you're just, you're trying to survive an event. You get chopped in week five. You're like, what the heck just happened? You could be gone. You could be gone in week two. You don't know how it goes or you survive all the way throughout. Right. Um, yeah. It's just, it's a little bit more nerve wracking just because you're like, oh, am I, am I going to, I'm going to make it. You get an injury early right to your quarterback and you're like, fudge. I don't know if I'm going to survive this week. Right. So it's just, it's just more, it's chaos. It's fun, organized chaos. Um, I highly recommend it. So go try, give a shot this year. Tell me what you think. I'd, I'd love to hear comments on guillotine leagues. Um, I'm I'm doing a few each year now. So yeah, I'm, I definitely have like 25 leagues. I think I'm going to be a part of this year, which is a lot. Um, not as, not as quite as many as other people, but yeah. So yeah, go check out guillotine leagues and enjoy yourself. Anyways, so thanks for coming in this week, folks. Um, I can't recommend it enough. I'm your host, Jesse Moore, a.k.a. J. Moore 5 You can find me on all the social media platforms, you know, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat. I'll be all over there. You can find my written work at the League Winners and B2W. If you do not follow them, they're awesome places to work for. They produce incredible content. Um, we just had Todd Vincent drop a very good little Debbie Insight piece. We also had a Zero RB um, Dynasty Startup Strategy article that dropped today. So there's just stuff coming out there all the time. Uh, P2W is another great place. There's a lot of good people there. So go check those places out and, you know, to go support the content creators because that's what it's all about. Anyways, um, I want to thank you all for coming in and take care. We'll see you next week. Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn.